Hello and welcome to another speedy installment of Mr. Seal Explains Shakespeare. We're looking at Romeo and Juliet, Act 4, Scene 3, Juliet's soliloquy before she takes the potion. So if you watch the film version, you'll notice they are going to cut out the entire soliloquy. No, seriously, the entire thing gets cut out. Yes, we have this beautiful theme music. Haunting, sad, powerful, and yet... Methinks it is not nearly as powerful as her actual soliloquy. I'm not going to say it's not a bad, bad piece or anything, but I mean seriously, how can we how can we skip over the soliloquy? Look at this darn thing; it's packed full of stuff. All right, so it starts with "Farewell, God knows when we will, when we shall meet again." I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse, what should she do here? My dismal scene I needs must act alone. Come, vile. And so she, she has that second thoughts from the get-go. And then she says, no, what's the point? She can't help me in this. I have to do this on my own. And she grabs the vial. You know, what if this mixture did not work at all? Shall I be married then to tomorrow morning? No. No, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. And she picks up her dagger and she lays it next to her bed. So if this potion fails, well... She'll be gosh darn, she's not going to be married. She'll kill herself with this dagger. And then it goes on, and she goes, what if it be poison? So she second guesses herself. What if it's poison that the friar has given her? And by doing so, he can escape this. And then she second, second guesses her own second guess here and goes, yeah, but wait, he's been tried a holy man, you know. He's been proven a holy man, so we can't very well expect him to be false with me. And then she says, you know, when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me. There's a fearful point, which would be pretty creepy. You're down in the tomb all by yourself. There's no light, no torches, and you're surrounded by dead bodies. And that's not where I would want to wake up. I don't know about you. Okay. And she's terrified. Like, what if she's there and she gets stifled? What if she suffocates down there? And then she says, you know, uh, well, what if... You know, as in the vault, an ancient receptacle where for those many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors were packed. We're bloody tibbled, yet but green in the earth. Lies festering in his shroud. That's a good point. You're going to have a ripe dead body down there. Not something I'd want to wake up to smelling either. And then at some hours in the night, spirits resort. So then she's what, sitting here going, oh my goodness, what if these spirits are out there and they're screaming and they're terrifying and it's awful. And then she goes on to say, what if just being down in there makes me insane and I grab one of my ancestors' bones and dash my own brains out? So, you know, again, she's terrified. And then she says she sees Tybalt's ghost and that he's, you know, roasting Romeo on a spit. And, you know, she's terrified. She's like, oh, no, no, don't do this. And upon a rapier's point, stay, Tybalt, stay. Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. And she drinks the potion and falls on the curtains. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that's way cooler than what they did in the movie. Not that what they did in the movie was bad. Hope you enjoyed this speedy edition of Juliet's Soliloquy. Have a great day.